Good morning and welcome to the Celtic Way Morning Briefing Live on Wednesday, November the 16th. We're back with a bang as with me today to discuss all things Celtic is TCW news writer Aidan McDonald. How's tricks, Aidan? You all good? Yeah, I'm good, Sean. How are you? Aye, fine and dandy. Aye, fine and dandy. Nice one. Um, now, before we get going fully, just a quick reminder, uh, as you can see along the bottom when I put it up, because I never put it up yet, um, the... Quite a reminder that our website subscription deal is currently one pound for two months at the moment. So jump on that as Celtic get underway down under. And wait, Aiden, is that is that Tony Haggerty's music? Oh, 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 hello, Tony. It's our very own soul man live from South Korea. How are you? <laughs> I'm very well. Greetings from Seoul Airport. Next stop, Sydney, providing I get my boarding pass sorted. But We'll worry about that later. <laughs> Seven o'clock in the evening here. I fly out at ten. Get to Sydney, Australia, some point tomorrow morning. But yes, eleven hours flight. Strap myself in for that. But yeah, so far so good. How are we doing, guys? We all right? Yeah, good. Tony. Ah, not bad, I. Um, I'm in one piece. Pete me the that. first question. Did the wardrobe make it through security, Tony? <laughs> Part of the wardrobe's here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Close indeed, yes. David, how are we? Um, I'm still alive, still good. A couple of TikTok videos if you're into that kind of thing on the, on the, on the TikTok, but there you go. How yeah. much was the luggage charge on the wardrobe? <laughs> Carol Mitchell's wanting to know. Andrew Gilly, I told you it was a long way. It is indeed, it is indeed. But yeah, happy to be nearly, this is a third leg coming up, uh, nearly there. So yeah, first two legs were good. So yeah, it's been... It's been long and eventful, but enjoying the fact that we're going. So, yeah, excellent. Uh, Tony mentioned TikTok videos there, uh, and you can also see all his travel vlogs from Glasgow, Frankfurt, Seoul, and, and soon Sydney across with YouTube, Twitter, Facebook. I've even stuck them on Instagram as well. So keep up to date with those. And on the website only, there will be special features from Australia. Uh, Tony will be doing an assortment of things while he's there. Uh, he'll be filing diaries from down under, the first of which I think has now been written, I believe. Is that right, Tony? It has indeed, yes. The first of which is in. You should should have that in your email basket, guys. So, yeah, you can read that in the coming days. Uh, my traverses and travails getting here. But we're still How have you here, found navigating the airport so far, Tony? How, how's it been? It's been okay. It's been not too bad. I, I, the moment's a bit of panic when I realised that I didn't have my boarding pass for the last one and I wasn't sure where to go and stuff. But, you know, you, you have a good Scots tongue in your head, as your <laughs> mum and dad used to say, and you just ask people and they kind of guide you and direct you eventually. So I'm in the right place. I'm at the right gate. I'll, I'll, I'll storm the Bastille, Sean. I'll be on that plane. Don't worry. By hook or by crook, I'll be there uh, and we'll be reporting live from the Sydney game and the Everton game uh, on yep. Thursday and Sunday, so all good. Nice one. Uh, I suppose getting to actual Celtic matters, uh, you can see by the, the strap line at the top there that we're chatting today firstly about Josip Juranovic, uh, guys, because a report in the Daily Mail reckons the club is open to selling him after the World Cup uh, and there's talk that talks over a new contract might not be going in a positive direction. Um, what's your take on it, Aidan? Uh, yeah, it's, it's disappointing, to be honest. I mean, Juranovic, he might have not been at his best this season, but I think he's still a really quality player. Offers a lot, and we've seen in the last 12 months just how important he is to the way Andrew wants to play. He sort of sorted into that inverted role seamlessly, really. Uh, obviously, this World Cup was probably, as soon as he started performing well last season, the World Cup was maybe highlighted as a a spell in which he would get a lot more sort of mainstream exposure and that could lead to bids in January. So there was always a wee thought in my head that that could be the case, but obviously if there's been potential contract talks and they're stalled, then it might be a wee bit more further along than we were hoping. Uh, obviously it's a, a kind of important player if you were losing them halfway through the season. So I'm hoping there's maybe not that much to it, but also we'll just need to wait and see. Do you agree with what Aidan's saying, Tony? I remember you getting a hell of a lot of jip from uh, the old Twitterati in particular for suggesting that Juranovic had a price earlier this season. Yeah, indeed. i, I tell you something else. I, I'll, I'll go a wee bit further than that. I, I think Juranovic's head has not not been in a Celtic ball game since he heard of Atletico Madrid's interest. Hmm. And he gave it him very flattered to be linked with a club like that. And 
the usual spiel that you would say uh, about Celtic as the team I play for right now. I've got to be honest, I, I think from that moment on, he realised that there could be potential big suitors out there for him. Now, we always caveat that with, you're only worth what someone is willing to pay yeah. for you. And I said at the time that between 12 and 15 million got you a seat at a table or a conversation could be mm-hmm. ignited at that. There were some people saying they, he's worth a lot more than that and putting ridiculous figures on his head. But I was making the point that, and you've made it as well, Sean, Nick, what, he's 27, isn't he? Yeah. He's got one, one big move, really, hasn't he, left mm-hmm. in him uh, to see out his career. But I've got to be honest, I, I was perturbed when Juranovic said those things back then. And I thought, this is a guy who, and as Adrian says, knew the World Cup was coming along and realises it's kind of now or never and I need to jump on that train. And uh, I don't know what kind of bids will come in for Juranovic because mm-hmm. I I think he's a good player, a steady player, but no more than that. I don't see where people are seeing the this real star quality in Juranovic. That could be controversial, but I think he's a very good, very good defender. But I, I think Ralston has really pushed him this season. And when Ralston, whenever Ralston appears in the team, again, I'm not too perturbed. So I, I think there's a lot of hyperbole around Josip Juranovic and what he brings to the table. And I stand by what I said. I still think if Celtic are getting anything between 12 and 15 million for Juranovic, then I still think that would be a very good deal. Patrick McLaughlin coming in saying a couple of assists or even a goal uh, for Juranovic at the World Cup and Celtic will be flooded with offers. I think that's a fair point. World Cups have been proven yeah. in the past um, to, to increase people's prices and, and uh, win them moves that maybe otherwise they maybe wouldn't get. But there's a few comments on a potential price. Um, we've had one saying, Tim and on saying he'll go for 20 plus million, uh, reinvest that in the team and that's the start of a, a new evolution for the squad, but we've got a few here saying as well, uh, where is it, Pete McGee, don't think we'd get anywhere near 20 million for Juranovic, he thinks 10 million is much more realistic, and then you've got Patrick in the middle of the two of them saying 12 to 15, which is roughly what you're saying, Tony. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Max yeah, starts making the point, you're, you're saying about Atletico Madrid, Max starts saying, if anything, that should have made him play better. Uh, he says, getting linked with big clubs should motivate you to play even better, it doesn't make much sense for him to have dropped off yeah, uh, it sometimes doesn't happen like that, Tony. But does it if you get linked to a club and it? We're not saying his head has been turned. You're su- you're suggesting that he's not quite been the same since. But regardless, it's not just a given that because you're linked no. to a big club that you will up your game. Sometimes it, it kind of gets you thinking the other way. Yeah. Or should you go in that kind of thing? But I, I think it was the classic case of agent talk with Juranovic mm. there and, yeah. and and filling a player's head with the figures that he could get elsewhere. But he was very quick to mention Atletico Madrid and being honoured and uh, flattered mm-hmm. by by their interest. You know, so and mm-hmm. I I always I'm always wary of players that say stuff like that and then and then come out with a line but Celtic are my club at the minute. That kind mm-hmm. of thing, you know. So but I uh, yeah, I I, I kinda it's kind of coincidental, isn't it? I'm just kind of mm. trying to connect the dots here with, with, with regards to Juranovic. Uh, Aidan, what's your thoughts? Are you, in terms of a potential price, I'll just put you on the spot. Um, <laughs> what one of the commenters do you agree with most? At the moment, it probably is 12 to 15 million in terms of if he'd kicked on from the way he did last season, I would be hoping for a lot more than that. My only caveat would be he did play in the Champions League, even if maybe some of his performances weren't uh, the best, nothing to even do from missing that penalty in the last game. Just sometimes he was found wanting a wee bit defensively, mm. as a few players were, it wasn't just him. But I think given that he has had six games in the Champions League, if he goes and plays quite well at the World Cup for Croatia, as one of the commenters was saying, a goal or a couple of assists, there's, out of all the, the teams that Celtic pros are going with, Croatia will probably get a chance of going the furthest. So if they were to get to the quarter final or something like that, and Iran reached the regular starter for them, so if he was playing all the time, then I think you could, regardless of his performances haven't been the best this season, I think that could inflate it back up to £20 million for him. Uh, just because, as you mentioned, Sean, in the past, World Cups have been like big mm. sales for clubs to just come in and spend money that they probably wouldn't have spent 
when the player was at their club side. So I think if he has a solid World Cup, that could inflate his he, uh, value right back up to the way it was. But at the moment, yeah, it'd probably be 12 to 15, I think. I think his contract's when? 2026? Yeah, so yeah. He's under contract. He's got a, he's got a decent deal still left. But I mean, during the summer, I was kind of of the opinion that the talk did sound very much like age, agent talk. I'm with you, Tony, in that it was potentially to try and get him that new deal. But then the reports coming out is that the new deal isn't being kind of it's not there's, there's not a meeting point yet. So that's not to say that there won't be uh, these things can get sorted out relatively quickly, even when they look that they're not look like they're not going to but for me I always get back to that do you remember that checklist yes I spoke about during the summer Tony like it most certainly has a price uh, and it was to yeah. my mind nowhere near 25 million or so a lot of people were quoting he's a good good player very good at times but he's also all the player that he's ever going to be yeah. um, so clubs won't be paying for potential which is to my mind anyway that that is what they pay a premium for these days it's not the act necessarily the actual player as he is when they buy him it's more the potential a lot of the time. Um, but that said, he is going to the World Cup. Uh, I think it was Patrick McLaughlin's comment. He is going to the World Cup. So, yes, if he does well there, that will increase any price that Celtic can ask for. I suppose, fundamentally, do I want Celtic to sell their key players? Of course not. Um, but is he indispensable? Well, not if Ange gets a wad of the money to go out and get another right back to compete with Anthony Ralston. He's not. Um, so, I suppose I'm pretty calm about this one in terms of yeah. seeing how it plays out. Happy to go with Ange and the club's thoughts on it if offers are made, I think. There's also a very black and white scenario here, isn't there? If he has a cracking World Cup, then to the highest bidder, mm-hmm. I guess. Yeah? And mm-hmm. if there is, if he does himself drum up that interest, if he doesn't have a good World Cup, then will that interest be there? So I'm like you, Sean. I'm, I'm quite willing to let the situation ride out and see and let the chips fall where they may. At, at the end of it, but uh, I guess Ange and the AGM was preparing Celtic supporters for the departure of some other stars and what he was saying. So I, I think Ange is of the opinion as well that if you want to go, then go. That mm-hmm. kind of thing. And I don't think you would. Uh, I don't think Juranovic is the kind of player you would bust the bank in terms of contract talks to keep a hold of mm-hmm. if he's agitating for a move. Others, uh, others are in a completely different camp. But if he's, if he's not wanting to sign a deal, and he wants to see what's out there, and he wants to go, then he goes. I think David Ferguson nails it here, and Ange Postecoglou has virtually said those exact words himself. He'll not force anybody to stay if they want to go. They can go. He'll use them while they're there. That kind of thing. Yeah. Um, I suppose who who is in that bracket, Tony? That you would potentially look at, not busting the bank, but. Certainly stretching it a wee bit to um, to keep Matt O'Reilly, I suppose, Real Hattati, yep. players like that. That is that Jota. who you put in that kind of bracket, Jota. Yeah, yeah. Look, look, I think Kyogo to an extent as well. Those, those are the, I think as well. I'd probably include them. Yeah, Carter yeah. Vickers too. Those are the immediate ones that spring to mind. Mm-hmm. Uh, if they if they were agitating for a move and it became a, as you say a, a monetary thing, then you would sort of turn around and say to the board, look. In order to plan ahead, these guys need to stay, mm-hmm. you know, to achieve what, what Celtic want to achieve moving forward. So those would be the kind of players I would be talking about. Does Juranovic fall into that category? I don't think he does, does he? No, I'm inclined to agree with you. Would you think, Aidan? Uh, probably <laughs> not at the moment. Probably not at the moment. But at last, the end of last season, I definitely would have said he was one of the main players in that category. I mean, the fact that... He sort of just fitted so easily into that inverted role. Creation International played at a high level. We'd already won a, just came off winning a league in a country. Uh, experienced player. It just kind of seemed a perfect fit. And I'd, my only concern would be that if Celtic do sell him for 12, 15, 20 million, whatever, I would be hoping that the club was going out and spending you know, the same sort of fee at the bare minimum they did on Jota. Carter Vickers, etc., to try and replace a right back because it's, it'd be a key position that, as much as Anthony Ralston has been brilliant, he, he would then only really have one player in that position. So you would have to go out and spend on a really high quality player that can come in and challenge Ralston or, or also be number one. And I, I just don't know in January, given how much money's been spent, etc., how much faith I would have in 
the club doing that. Although I say that Andy's recruitment has been really good. So last couple of windows, I've got to say that I'm. I think the club should. Be no, it has. Last it has. couple of windows, aye, but. And I know just spending like a high fee doesn't always guarantee quality as well, but I just I would be hoping that they'd be spending a good chunk of that on the place in that position. He, he also and also said he'd been leaving stuff like that in Mark Lowell's hands, didn't he? And he said he was going to come in at the end of this because he was planning ahead for the the next mm-hmm. window. Uh, I think what we can uh, <laughs> refer to was I mean Mark Lowell is the the head of first team yes. recruitment and stuff, so that is what he should be doing, but. Uh, it's uh, more like the it's an unofficial thing, obviously, because they've not called him director of football. But that is almost the way that that works. Well, they drop the list of affordable yes. and targets and stuff, and then in a in a properly working one is what I would say. The guy who's actually got to coach them says, "I I I, I could work with him. He would he would yeah. fit in, or no, he I, I don't really think he would fit in that kind of thing." Um, so I was that's the, the way that it is working so I'm, I'm quite happy enough with that if that's the case I was just sort of thinking in terms of factoring Juranovic into that mm-hmm. that if they've been planning ahead and Mark Law saying to Ange well if he's leaving then here's X, Y and Z what do you think of them and then Ange comes in he said at the tail end and say right well depending on how much they get for Juranovic if it's been decided that those contract talks have broken down and he, mm-hmm. and he wants to go elsewhere, then, as you said there, Aidan, you'd like to think they would spend the guts of whatever they can re- recoup as a fee for him on a suitable, if not better, yeah. replacement. I just wouldn't want I wouldn't want it to be like a sort of project-type signing, if you know what I mean. If you were going to lose like Juranovic, I, I know, once again, no money doesn't guarantee, but I would be looking for someone that can kind of just come straight in and playing all the time and be challenging Andy Ralston because that's what you've got in Juranovic now regardless of he's maybe not been as good this season he was, you need a player that's capable of coming in and playing first team football straight away, which knowing the way Andrew's recruitment's operated so far, that is, would probably be the case, yeah. but yeah, that would be my only concern. Ch- Charlie McGarver coming in here, kind of concerned himself, saying Celtic have a history of selling players for, for instance, 50 million or so, big money. But replacing them with someone, probably a project is what he's referring to, for, for one and a half million or so. Uh, you get the point he's trying to make. Uh, Europe this year, he says, showed you get what you pay for. I think that last sentence is potentially a wee bit unfair, but the, the first sentence certainly, I think just the model that Celtic work on, I, I, I don't really see an issue with replacing someone with a, a player that's cheaper with the intention of, again, selling them for, for, uh, for big money further down the line. I didn't see any of Angie's signings as being projects. Did you? Did you look at yeah, them? Maybe as... I think maybe a wee bit of a um, project. It depends with how you define project. Like I would define it not necessarily someone that you're not playing right away, but will play in the future, like Bernabe. Um, although some of that's to do with how good good Greg Taylor's been playing. Yeah, no, yeah, of course. Um, I would just define it as a, a younger player who still has a lot of growing to do as a, as a player. Yeah. That, that would, I development to, to to grow into that would be. A sellable asset further down the line. I just think that's that's a a sensible way to go about it. With Celtic, there's, there's very very few. Joe Hart being the exception, where very few um, times where if Celtic sign a thirty or thirty year old or more player uh, to come straight into the first team, knowing that they're not going to have any resale value, it, it's a it's a rare thing for that to happen with Celtic, given the the kind of model that they try and work to. Yeah, I I, I think actually. You should be glad. Disappointed personally for Matt O'Reilly, but glad he's not actually going to the World Cup from a well, purely Celtic's Celtic Celtic point of view. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, because that, I think, the, the player you you really need to be and touched on it earlier about the, the players he'd maybe bust the bank for, but uh, that would be a major concern because he's 21 and mm-hmm. he is at the top of his game and performing very well. So those are the kind of players that I would be warding off potential mm-hmm. suitors by saying, look, we value you, we want you to stay if it takes a, another contract, a, mm-hmm. a renegotiated contract to keep you here, then I, I would like Celtic to do that. Because at 21... I'm not, I'm not right saying that, yep. Um, O'Reilly's a highest valued player alongside Atate in his opinion. Patrick McLaughlin says, I'm actually more worried about an English Premier League team coming in for O'Reilly. Now, He's channeling my thoughts here because uh, we, we've said already this this summer, Tony, that I think both of us believe that Matt O'Reilly, when he does go, if he continues this trajectory, um, will break Kieran Tierney's Scottish transfer record. Yeah. 
Uh, and going back to that checklist that I'm always going on about, I think I've said before, but he ticks every box, literally every box. The only thing, uh, somebody put in a comment saying, uh, I can't, can't quite find it now, but basically saying that O'Reilly's not quite there yet because he doesn't score enough. That is actually the only thing I would say is uh, missing in his game just now. Uh, it's actually what I wrote when I done the scouting report for the the in depth scouting report for the website forum back in January was a kind of concern over shooting and um, my big goal totals and stuff. But he's twenty one, and that will come. I think there's I think there's enough about his game that you think that you kind of know that that will come. He'll add some more goals to it. And frankly, if you're getting double figures and assists as well, it kind of softens the blow when you're not putting it in yourself, doesn't it? But um, for every other reason, he ticks the boxes. If it's an English Premier League team, I already say if it's a Premier League team, add on a tax of a few million anyway. But in particular with Matt O'Reilly, I know he, I know he's a Denmark international, a Denmark under twenty one international. But for their purposes down south, he's homegrown because he came through at Fulham. That counts towards their squad totals. If you have just even for the Premier League, but also if it's a team that's wanting to go into Europe, that counts for them as well. Everything just mounts up with Matt O'Reilly, where I just don't see a world barring serious serious injury where he does not blow that Kieran Tierney Scottish transfer record out the water. I just hope sure. it's not time soon. That's the only thing. And that transfer record being 25 million quid, sure. Mm-hmm. Yep. So, and I, you, you can only see that happening to Matt O'Reilly in the future because he is going to get better and better, Aidan. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, definitely. He's a brilliant player. And in terms of, you don't want to wish players away, obviously, but in terms of Matt O'Reilly, Celtic are in a strong negotiating position there because he, he signed less than a year ago at this point. So if it hopefully wouldn't be January, but even if it was this summer, he would still have a, what, about four, four and a half years or 20, something? 2026, he's, he's yeah, yeah, contracted yeah, to his really, As I say, the club with a contract situation of have pretty much got it spot on. They've tied down people where they need to be tied down to get the value up, to, to make sure that they're here for the... That there's a kind of certain commitment to the club as well whether they were to leave or not the club will be compensated all that kind of stuff i think they've i think they've handled the contract situation well the last couple of windows you know they have potentially after uh after that first the window when Ange came in when obviously you had you know christy ayer and edward's contract were all sort of dragging on so they've done the, well the christy one the christy one still to this day yeah baffles still, me ending, in, ending yeah. in a january ending yeah that, was, that wasn't that wasn't uh, so that's been turned around the contracts aye. But I, I think uh, I think if you want to be a, a forward-thinking club and a big club, you have to act like a big club, mm. and you you know you you get these guys tied down on deals. You see, Sean, what is it? What was your phrase? You always said uh, underrated security. Oh, security is underrated. I security is underrated. You know, so, and I think Celtic in the last two windows, especially since Ange came in, have mm. acted like a big club, and. Uh, and if players do go, then the club are putting themselves in a position where they are going to get top dollar. Mm-hmm. And Angie at the AGM was preempting that uh, further down the line. As you see, maybe not January or the summer, but in times to come. But he was saying that we will do our due diligence and work ahead in terms of win- uh, looking at windows, future windows. Mm-hmm. So I-, I think that's that's the that's the best that Celtic can do in, in order to act like a big club and prepare for every eventuality. Now, if it's Juranovic this window, if it's O'Reilly in the summer, or if it's Jota in the summer, or whoever, I'm just plucking these names out there. I'm not saying yeah. that's going to happen, but I, I think there's there'll be workings behind the scene in Ange Postacoglu and Matt Law and all that will be well aware of it. And, and uh, Michael Nicholson, and, you know, they'll be taking uh, steps to ensure that uh, that Celtic get the best deals and all this, whether it's signing players or letting some of their stars go. And that's what big clubs do. And if Celtic operate within financial parameters and boundaries, but if they can make it work for them to the best of their capabilities, then mm. I, I think that I'm, I'm happy with the way the club's moving forward under this manager and the backroom staff and the board members and people that he's brought on board. So... Uh, I think we're, we're doing everything we possibly can to act like a big club. I'd agree with that. Um, Carol making a great point here. It's not just other clubs that will be watching Celtic players at the World Cup. Celtic yeah. will be watching their own kind of uh, targets at the World Cup as well, you presume. Uh, fair point. 
And on the, in fact, on the subject... Back to Martin O'Neill World... signed Josh Fulharan, didn't he? Yes, yes. From the I World remember Cup. him. Was, it, was, that, was that World Cup or was it Euro 2000? It was a major tournament. I know uh, I might not have been I remember him playing. I remember him yeah, playing. So, you know, that kind of thing. And that was a left field shout, wasn't it? Yep. Because it wasn't uh, a name that immediately leapt to mind. So, I, I, Angie's all over this, I would have thought. Mm-hmm. And those at Celtic will be all over the, this tournament. Um, on the subject of the World Cup, up on the website today, I'll put the I'll put the link there. Aiden's Aiden's probably going to laugh because he could he could see that I was getting stressed out over all the FIFA documents the other day. But uh, aye, on the subject of the World Cup, um, it's uh, I was right down a rabbit hole, right down a rabbit hole with FIFA documents, trying to work out exactly how FIFA calculates club payments of the World Cup because the the totals that I seen in a few articles weren't they weren't quite chiming with what was actually on FIFA's kind of documents from the last World Cup and different things so I've been away down a rabbit hole on FIFA doc, official documents and stuff like that trying to figure out how much Celtic could really make from the group stages including a certain uh, for a certain Jeremy from Pong and Olivier and Cham uh, so I the link to that is um, is in the comments and um, give it a read just see, see what you th- I mean I could be totally wrong I was never that good at accounts in school but um but it's right. certainly, I've certainly went right, right down a rabbit hole with it. It's, it's what you would call a deep dive. Uh, backed up, kind of, by, uh, by some FIFA graphics and stuff. If you could call that backed up, because if you've watched FIFA Uncovered lately, maybe it doesn't back anything I'm saying up. But, um, but on that note uh, as well, um, Tony, you're obviously embarking on the final leg of your journey in the next few hours, Sydney bound. Um, the first game is tomorrow, yep? Tomorrow. Tomorrow, yep. You look tomorrow forward evening. to Sydney, uh, Sydney FC versus Celtic at the Allianz, I believe. The Allianz Stadium, yeah, which is a new, new uh, stadium, yeah. I can't wait. Just want to get there and get settled and then do the thing and, and meet some people because there's a lot of people come on the, the chat and say they, hopefully they, they can say hello and I encourage that. If you are about and you subscribe and you watch the pod and you subscribe to the Celtic Way, please come up and say hello. Mm-hmm. We'll have a chat and I'll say thank you in person for your subscription. Uh, I'd like that very much. And just in any way, just come up and introduce yourself and say hi. And we'll, we'll have a blather about Celtic. Uh, I think that's one of the good things about it, Sean, that being over there, you can touch base with lots of guys who do the the supporting aye. of Celtic in a very, aye. very different way to our own selves. There was um, a comment, I can't find it just now, there was a comment earlier on asking where you were sitting, Tony, so they could try and navigate their way around to you. You can confirm you'll be in the press part, uh, the press area, though, why? I'll be in the press box somewhere, yeah. If there is a press box or a press area, I'll, I'll be there. So, yeah, if you're anywhere near there, yeah, by all means, come up and say hello. It's uh, it'd be good to, good to talk to people, you know, it always is. Good for the um, soul, son, I think, everybody. Yeah, good you know, for the soul, aye. Yeah. Um, Patrick McLaughlin, yes, it is 8.45am. Uh, Celtic part-time, as the club like to say. Um, <laughs> most yeah. is like Big Tony in Oz. Um, Not yet. And so, Tony, but, uh, he's on, nearly, on there, nearly there. Nearly there, aye, right, nearly there. there, um, there. Robert yeah. Gibson says it's a great stadium. Uh, he'll be there tomorrow night as well. So, uh, it's a fair few. Fair few will be there, Tony. Um, yeah, or... Um, sorry, say again. Three quarters of the stadium's sold out, isn't it? Was it sold? Is it? Yeah. Seventy thousand, or, or, or the guys will correct me. Sorry, eighty-three and a half thousand. Is it? Well, there you go. Uh, I think it will be. Uh, there'll be lots of interest there, Aiden. The manager's homecoming tour. It's uh, his box office, isn't it? And you'll see just why tomorrow. No, yes, definitely. There's plenty to be excited about, and it's good. It's good to have this sort of wee couple of friendlies and stuff because you'd end up at least it's only like you know four weeks without Celtic then really rather than five weeks yeah. so it's not doing that. Mid season pre season, Tony, that's the way that I, I I'm definitely with, I'm I'm with you on that. Mid season yes. pre season. I don't mid-season, think that pre-season. obviously it's a the marketing thing and all that and Ange getting home to Australia, take Celtic with them, Celtic being big in Australia anyway, that kind of thing is all relevant. But I do think it's very much a case of keeping the players that aren't going to the World Cup ticking over as much as possible, then allowing them a wee break and then they come back and they go for a treble and they'll be a wee, that wee bit sharper than, than well, theoretically, that wee bit sharper than, than opponents that have just been having a holiday, basically. Without a doubt, without a doubt Sean, I, I, I think the manager's watchword on that is to hit the ground running again. Because, uh-huh. I mean, I, I know they say it, but it is the mantra, isn't it? They never stop. He won't uh-huh. stop. 
when he'll ask his players not to stop and this was all factored in that they're going there. Yeah, it's the homecoming and it's a, a money spinner as well, but they're going to do some serious work as well. Yeah. Pete McGee saying, will it be a high press area that you're sitting in, Tony? I would say only when Ange Postacoglu enters it after the game. <laughs> indeed, indeed. I've actually um, no idea where I was. Again, I'll, again, I have to pick up my uh, passes and stuff tomorrow afternoon at the stadium. So I'll be milling around there at some point uh, in the afternoon. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, as I say, if you're if you're milling around yourself, come up and say hello, and uh, we'll have a chat. It'd be good to speak to a lot of you. Uh, Robert just confirming that the the capacity of the Allianz tomorrow will be forty five thousand, but the game at the at the Acker Stadium that they're playing uh, Everton will be around right. eighty odd. So, some sight, Tony. You're going to get to see. Oh, without a doubt, I, I'm really looking forward to it. And those that know me, I, I think uh, I have been stressing this that feel really privileged and humbled and honoured that I'm doing this and it's yeah it's a long way to go but it's uh, yeah I think a lot of people would love to do it and I'm quite grateful for the opportunity to do it uh, so yeah but uh, I, I think what we said Sean uh, the trip and the experience of a lifetime and I'm I'm fortunate mm-hmm. so yeah I, uh, just before we go, this will lead us on to me kind of plugging my World Cup predictions, right? But David Ferguson says, what about Andrew Jota answering his car show? Now, I don't know if you've seen this, Tony. I don't know if you were travelling. But, you know, I've asked Aidan before. I asked him eh, not long ago, actually, Messi or Ronaldo. He says, Messi, no doubt about it, fine. I asked Tony, Messi or Ronaldo. His answer's always Maradona. But you go, Armando. When, eh, when eh, Ange Postacoglu was asked it, he just says, Jota, mate. <laughs> is that what you said eh? <laughs> and a Brilliant. car drove off into the sunset oh excellent well there you yeah, go yeah. but yeah it's always yeah. it's always Diego Armando for me <laughs> um, right shall we blow the full time whistle there I reckon lads uh, before we go a reminder not only about the one pound for <clears throat> two month subscription deal but also that with Tony and Sydney we'll have diaries features and of course match coverage as well uh, and as as well as that, uh, with the World Cup starting this weekend, all three of us will be posting our predictions for that on the website so, uh, website soon as well. And that includes a tip for the best Celtic player, or at least the Celtic player that will make it the furthest. Um, so, bye. Keep an eye out for that. Uh, thank you all for joining us. Thanks for your contribution, Aidan. Safe travels to Sydney, Tony. Uh, Cheers, and we'll no catch problem. you all tomorrow. And I'll see you at some Cheers. point, yeah. Thanks very much. Take care, guys. All the best day. Thanks, guys.